ancient Mexico. Man-made monuments that represent a mystery almost as baffling as creation itself. Scattered all over Mexico, these remains bear witness to the achievements of men in a far and distant past. A past about which we still know very little. As we travel between just a few of the hundreds of archaeological sites, we can only speculate about their origins, their connection with one another, and what they stood for. Teotihuacan, situated some 32 miles north of Mexico City, is dominated by the massive pyramids of the sun and moon. Founded over 2,000 years ago by one of Mexico's earliest civilizations, Teotihuacan can lay claim to the title of first city of the Americas. From fragments of poetry which have survived the ages, we know that these pyramids were held in special awe and were revered as the sacred home of the gods. Even though it was night, even though it was not day, even though there was no light, they gathered. The gods convened there at Teotihuacan. Six hundred miles away, perched on the shores of the Caribbean, lies Tulum, one of the first cities sighted by Spanish explorers in 1518. A little before sunset, we perceived in the distance a town so big that the city of Seville could not appear larger or better. There were many houses of stone and a very large tower. Although the Spanish spoke of Tulum as a great city, only these few walls remain, a clear reminder of what has disappeared all over Mexico, perhaps forever. Olmecs and Zapotecs, Toltecs and Chichimecs, Mayas and Aztecs. The civilizations of ancient Mexico were many and they developed gradually over a period which stretched back some 3,000 years before Christ. While these people differed in language, customs and lifestyles, in one fundamental respect they were as one. They all worshipped the sun, looking upon it as the center of the universe and the source of all life. Faces, figures, signs, all trying to communicate their secrets through a dozen centuries. These hieroglyphs at Monte Alban are the first known examples of writing on the American continent. Their meaning remains largely undeciphered, but archaeology and science are slowly unraveling some of their mysteries. Situated in the valley of Oaxaca, Monte Alban was built between the 4th and 9th centuries as a religious center, and it still preserves the aura of a great sanctuary favored by the gods. As in most of the ancient sites of Mexico, the stone structures were probably temples and living quarters for priests. The ordinary people lived in less permanent houses outside the ceremonial area.
William the Conqueror was invading England, the Toltecs from central Mexico were establishing their military superiority in Chichen Itza. Tigers, eagles, jaguars, these were their military orders. Their might prevailed everywhere. The bonfire smokes, shields thunder, God of the ringing bells, the flower of the enemy shudders, eagles and tigers resound. Chichen Itza was originally founded by a people known as the Mayas. But everything we see now was built by the invading Toltecs. The ball court in the foreground is the largest in Mexico. But we know little about the game, beyond that it had a religious and ritualistic significance. Descended from the primitive hunters who crossed the Bering Straits from Asia, these people built civilizations of such sophistication that the first Europeans to discover them thought that they must have been built by the Greeks, Chinese, or Egyptians. As late as the 19th century, many scholars seriously believed that they were the descendants of the lost tribes of Israel. According to legend, this well was the home of the god of rain. From its depths, archaeologists have recovered treasures of gold and jade, as well as fragments of human remains. We have every reason to believe that this was indeed a sacred well, where humans were sacrificed to please the capricious gods. A thousand years ago, Palenque stood at the height of its glory, one of the great cities of the greatest of all the ancient Mexican civilizations. We have a considerable knowledge about the Mayas, and what we know speaks of an extraordinary people, builders, artists, scientists. The Mayas excelled at every form of civilized activity. Between the fourth and ninth centuries, they were undoubtedly the world's leading mathematicians and astronomers. They had calculated the phases of the moon, invented the use of zero, and devised a calendar even more accurate than the one we use today. Yet suddenly, with all their talents and achievements, the Mayas abandoned Palenque and some of their other great centers, leaving them to be enveloped by the encroaching jungle. Whether this exodus was caused by famine, disease, foreign invaders, internal struggles, or a combination of these factors, we cannot tell. It might be important to find out because the answer to the mystery could help us to avoid the mistakes that destroyed this past civilization. After their descent from the highlands, the Mayas concentrated their efforts in the peninsula of Yucatan. And at Uxmal, they achieved some of their final masterworks. 
the Pyramid of the Dwarf dominates the exquisite quadrangle known as the nunnery. Little of the detail remains, but what we can see bears testament to the Mayan genius. Governor's Palace is considered by many to be the finest monument in all the Americas, notable both for its exquisite workmanship and superb proportions, dissymbolic of the Maya's ability to rise above their surroundings and to reveal in the everyday shades of the infinite. Builders, artists, writers, mathematicians, disciples of the stars, travelers in space, measurers of the infinite. These were the civilizations of ancient Mexico. so much to think over that I do not know how to describe it, seeing things as we did that had never been heard or seen before, or even dreamed about. These words were written by a Spaniard in 1550. Today our sentiments remain very much the same, for in the intervening centuries we have still but barely begun to scratch the surface of Mexico's hidden past.